Yo, yo, are you in? Yep, I'm here. Nice, nice. I was asking to get it through Discord so I can be on the old laptop, but I don't know. I don't know, do if that, I don't know if that works. It does. I've done it on my own. Have you? Yep, sure have. I wanted to be on the headphones and then be on the laptop so I can look up everything. My phone's about to die, but my phone charger is the same one that charges my laptop, so we're both about to die. Yep. Yeah, but uh, are you? Are he able okay. to send it to Justin, Justin's the guy in the chair. We need to look anything up. Yeah, yeah. If he's. I think he's away from his phone, right? Right, the second. Away from computer. Uh huh. Um, are you able to send it to Discord to one person and then to text message to another person? I guess, right? You should be able to. Yeah, I mean, it's the same link to join the same party. You know. Yeah, I just remember we tried to do it. You weren't. Maybe you were in it. I forget. But Justin tried to. How do we do it? I like I was on my phone and he was on his computer. He said he emailed it. Yeah, emailed it, but it wasn't working. Like it wasn't recording. Hmm. But that what wasn't that our video one? No, that was on Riverside. That was on a different app. Right. So that yeah, yeah. Because or, or was it? It wasn't that it wasn't recording. Every time I would, uh, we were on the phone talking. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sent, uh, like, it's, it's being sent right now, and mm-hmm. then click to join. You couldn't see anything in the lobby. It would just like was blank, and you go, hello, hello, like no one on the other end. Hello, like yeah. And then you get out of it, and then call. I would call. Like, are you in it? Yeah, man, I can't hear you. It just like wasn't working for a reason. So I hear you. I hear you. So wait, are we? uh, Let's begin. You know, (laughs) let's what? I said, let's begin. Yeah, that's fine. Um, really quick. I don't know where Justin is. Right? He sent the invite, but he's not on his phone. So, yeah, we could talk about your your day yesterday. Um, Putting the fucking, kids down. Well, the baby's going to be getting up right now, which is why I wanted to hurry up. But yeah. Oh well, hey. I guess we'll have, I guess we'll have some background. Have a little baby in the background. Which... A little featured featured guest. <sighs> yeah. So go ahead. And talk right. So here's I will get into tomorrow, but that's why I wanted to be on because you know when I go back and forth on these damn apps, I tend to cut out. So I'll do my best to just think about the bets I won. (laughs) But I do want to lead off with my boy, Rafael Nadal, withdrawing from Wimbledon. Yep. He's, which sucks for, because he was, he was uh, playing the the American. uh, Right. Taylor Fritz. And Mm -hmm. Fritz had like so many opportunities to close out the game or the match. And, uh, and he ends up losing in a tie break in the fifth set, I think. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Nadal like withdraws right after that. You know, so it's like yeah. well, you yeah. could have done it during the match, you know, or before it. Right. Hey, tried what to power it through. Yeah, <laughs> it could be one of two things. He tried to power through and couldn't, or he lost and said, "Ah, it's because my injury." <laughs> Who Nadal? Yeah, it was about to lose. Well, yeah, I mean, he he won, lost one. Yeah, but... I know they went like fifty nine games, right? Yeah, it was because it went five sets, but the, Nadal took like a, a medical timeout or whatever and like left the court mm-hmm. and then came back. He was like, I think the way it went, he was up three games to nothing. And then Fritz mm-hmm. came back and won the first set and then was like dominating the second set. And that's when he took his medical timeout, left, came back, and all of a sudden, like, he tried to, like, I don't know, he almost did like the Jordan flu game type thing where he's like, <laughs> oh, like, barely like serve. It, like the yeah. serving speed, the miles per hour, and his serves were like way down. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. this fool was like fucking doing like incredible like backhand and shit like that. Like, what the fuck is going on? I think it's I think it's a proven fact that when you play sick or like playing through pain, you perform better. <laughs> yeah, well, he looked. He didn't look like he lost much of a step, even though they kept saying he was injured. But yeah. I don't know. There's always, especially after the Paul Pierce incident years ago. There's always the possibility that your quote unquote injury was you really just had to go take a shit. And so you're just like, <laughs> ah, like, you know, like, time out, I gotta go. Yeah. You, you know, that's what happened with the Paul Pierce thing, right? <laughs> no, that's so funny. But oh. I know Derek, Derek Lewis uh, has a post fight interview. He's like, 
Uh, I saw you like wincing and grabbing at your abdomen. Uh, was there an injury? He's like, nah, I just had to boo boo. <laughs> yeah, you you know it's Paul Pierce. Instead, I'm talking about though, like when no, he, not really. I think it was in the finals against the Lakers. Maybe it wasn't the Lakers, but uh, <laughs> where he got like hurt and they took him out on a wheelchair. And there's like that meme. So they took him out on a wheelchair and then he came back a couple couple minutes later. So it's like you got you left the court in a wheelchair. And, yeah. a couple, and then a couple minutes later, you were back, like, fine, and ready to play. And then he finished the game. And, like, recently, last year or two years ago, he came out and said, like, he really just had to use the restroom. So, <laughs> well, Paul Pierce is uh, – I don't know how trustworthy he is. <laughs> well, it, it makes more sense than, like, actually thinking he had an injury that he yeah, could have shot for. him up with some shit and he came out. I feel well, great. That's, that, that's the other thing, too, which is what I was thinking – about the match yesterday, like, is oh, it for really sure. that fair that this fool can, like, leave, get shot up, like, whatever, and mm-hmm. come back and, I don't know, I mean. And look better, <laughs> almost. <laughs> exactly. Like, would you guys shoot It's the same with? thing with the Aaron Rodgers when he got injured against the Bears and came back and won fucking, yeah. that fool post-interview, that fool was all wide-eyed and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, that's well, a, a Regardless, we, won't, we don't need to spend too much time on this. Congratulations, yeah. Nick Kyrgios. Uh, yeah. for advancing um yep. and and that's that yep so i think that that'll cover opening here yeah we'll talk um, about your price picks absolutely absolutely i will um i'm on a rampage i'm heating up again that's the that's exactly how i wanted to be welcomed back to price picks here <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. so i hit like my first like i said we talked about the first ones i hit the first two they were just baseball all right, I'm going to try to look at them right now. So give me a sec. If I cut out, it is what it is. Just, just give us, like, the – you don't need to give us specifics. Okay. Um, well, like, I don't even remember. I don't know. So the, I hit a four-teamer, and it was – if you guys were listening to the pod or tailing it or anything, um, Justin had given me a lock. The other, mm-hmm. this Max Scherzer, over seven strikeouts. Over seven strikeouts, excuse me. Yep. And uh, so I was like, hey, I'll, I'll – I'll, I'll pick up, make a bet based around that. So I had Scherzer. <clears throat> Fuck, who else did I have? I think I had Cindergard over okay. strikeouts. Mm-hmm. I think it was fast four. He ended with like eight, I believe. And I had under first inning runs for, I think, both of those games. It was either the Angel game, right? Because Cindergard's on the, yeah, Angel game. And then I want to say Cubs Mets, I believe, or something. I forget what. Anyways, I want a four teamer. About that, I had it as a flex and a power play. So, mm, double, double dipped. Yep, double down on it and fucking hit that one. Um, I hit an esports bet last night. It was a four out of five, though. That's the one I sent you this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I've just been on a rampage. Baseball to me is is uh, pretty easy right now. It was a player prop because yesterday we were at like the. Uh, like we either had aces or like trash pitchers starting, you know. Well, those are like anybody who follows daily daily fantasy sports. Um, your days are based around, or like your approaches are based around the pitchers. And mm-hmm. so, if it's like an ace, if there are a lot of aces pitching, yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to put your attention on like the best of the aces. And when it's just like you know, like the tail end of their rotations, that's when you can start looking for batters and stuff or whatever. But yeah, yeah. So yesterday I had Otani over strikeouts. I had Lance Lynn, I believe his name. Lynn, the yep. right side pitcher, right under side. strikeouts, hit that. And then um, fuck, I forget who the other guy was. It's but okay. anyway, <laughs> I had him. I had it was wait was Scherzer yesterday? Uh, Scherzer was yesterday, yeah. No, no, okay. no. Mm, I forget. Two days ago, I think. Who was it, man? It wasn't like Garrett. I think it was Corbin Burns. Oh, Corbin Burns, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I had Burns over strikeouts. I had Lynn under, and I had uh, Otani over. That hit, but I also had Lynn and Burns in another bet, so I doubled down on them as well. And mm-hmm. that one hit. So I've hit, like, I'm, I'm not even joking, probably – Eight of ten in the last week. That's the way to do it. That's, That's literally it. Literally. And it's one of them like I showed you was a big chunk bet. That's the one Justin said to go all in on. And I was like, I'll go all in, but I'll leave a little bit in the bank just in case. 
mm-hmm. and it hit, and I was like, I should have cleared the house, you know, for sure. But <laughs> play it smart. So it's, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but uh, yeah, it's it's a blessing and a curse, I guess, to be able to do the uh, the double dip. Yeah, which I always like fuck myself, but like, <laughs> you, like it, the worst thing you could do is tie the same same prop in multiple parlays. And right. that that one prop is the one that loses, because then you fuck yourself out of like any opportunity of winning. But yeah. when it goes in your favor, then fucking not much of a better feeling, you know. So what, what I'm doing now, because I've I have time to now. No, I totally agree and understand what you say. Um, I tend to do that though. I did that a lot in hockey, where it's like th- this bet or this two leg is like absolutely gonna hit. So I just basically make multiple bets around that. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, uh, yep. Like I said, I just feel like I'm in the in the rhythm for baseball right now. However, I'm making a list uh, of like Santa my Claus? dates. <laughs> nah, and this will checking it twice and shit. <laughs> uh, I am checking it twice though because the list I'm making is basically like who did good and who did bad, and not mm. necessarily to take that same pick the next time, but to just review. This guy mm. didn't even get four strikeouts last game, you know, Lynn or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, making like a. a pros and cons lists are good versus bad well you know what it's uh for anybody out there who dabbles in other avenues of investing mm-hmm. so, which you can consider sports betting or price picks and investment mm-hmm. i don't i don't know who would consider it that but it's the same approach but a lot of successful traders in the stock market they keep a, a journal of what they're feeling uh as they approach or as they enter the trade and, uh, mm-hmm. and they just keep little tabs on it. So it's like, this is what they had. I'm sure their system is the same. This is what they were feeling. This is the amount that they wagered. And mm-hmm. this was the outcome. So if it's like, uh, I was like, you know, like on the fence about it. I did like, you know, whatever, $1,000 in and uh, I lost money. Well, now, mm-hmm. you know, next time you have that, like that feeling for that trade. Right. Uh, pr- probably don't take it or scale down or whatever. And as you know, vice versa for like I was super confident, fucking A plus trade, went in like half portfolio, made twenty K, you know, it's like okay. Every time you have that fucking feeling, make sure you, you're going like you know, that kind yeah, of shit. No, so, I, I didn't even know that was a thing, but that's that's kind yeah. of just it, it just makes sense. It's kinda of like that thing uh when you're like taking notes back in the day, it's like just writing it on paper kind of gives you like a, a better understanding. <laughs> for sure. It just is uh it takes time. So, but know, this if is, if this is someone like, said, yeah, good. I'm just saying, if you have, if you're someone like me or Justin with a fucking house full of kids and shit, it just <laughs> goes a little harder to do that. But yeah, if you have the time, Absolutely. definitely the best way to do it. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, I had brought this up on the podcast a while ago, like during hockey season that like, this was kind of my, my strategy per se is to just follow certain people and just kind of read when they're going to perform and not perform, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so That's, like today when I was I was looking at price picks the slate last night and I was like you know what, I think I'm gonna take a day off from from at least baseball today you know yeah I mean th- there's definitely something uh, about there's it's definitely a benefit to do what you're saying uh, just key on like one team or one player if you're doing yeah. player props and mm-hmm. just tail that the whole year because you start to get the, and like I said the, people use it for trading the stock market as well. Just stick mm. to like a couple, a handful of uh, stocks, yeah, and you start to learn how it trades, and you become like better at like noticing when to get in, when to get out. Same yeah, thing for it, player and props, it, and then it helps you like notice like, oh, this like look at this one, you know, like mm-hmm. someone you're not paying attention to. Oh, Definitely. You know? So yeah, so <laughs> like I said, just looking at today's uh, slate on Prize Picks, I was like, um. There's a couple I like, but the other ones I feel like I'd be forcing. So I did, obviously, my degenerate ass put like a $5 bet in. But just to see how it plays out, you know, and then I'll <laughs> add it to the, the data. <laughs> I was just about to say, if you're as big of a fucking degenerate as I am, you feel like you can read every player, every team. <laughs> yeah. You know, my, my, I'm not my, expecting the W today. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, journal is basically the size of an encyclopedia. But, yeah, it's probably this old Doctor Strange and shit, which I still haven't watched it yet. Uh, I don't want to get away. Uh, go on Let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Yeah, I just can't with Marvel right now. I don't know. 
Anyway. It's, it's, it's really bad. Speaking of just getting into it real quick, I caught up on Miss Marvel last night and I, both episodes, I was behind two episodes, both episodes. I was like head down on my phone the whole time. Good. I'm not even going to watch it. Nope. No, no point. Okay. That, oh, that's wait. it. Next. <laughs> okay. I have to bring this up though, since you brought up a TV show ah. and, then I'll, and then I'll get on, I'll, I'll go about uh, my day. Uh, okay. yesterday her hour day and then hopefully yeah. justin's in by then we can talk for her but we'll sing have you before. have you yeah. <laughs> have you uh watched or heard of uh the terminal list yet i've heard of it oh i couldn't my. tell you who's it i've heard of it it's gotten really good re- reviews yeah i think it's like around at nine on imdb but it's uh the main character is chris pratt he plays like a oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've heard that's why yeah, and uh, Taylor Klitsch is in it. Yeah, uh, I like him as well. Then there's some like other characters that are in it that I'm like, oh, I recognize that guy from Storm. One of the yeah, yeah, it's just fucking you know, uh, uh, Mighty Ducks D2, the Iceland coach. Yeah, he's in it. It just makes me like <laughs> chuckle every time I see him. Yeah, I, I can't of, think. He kind of put on some like LBs, but uh-huh. yeah, pretty funny to see him. But it's really good. I have uh, two episodes left. Really good yeah, so far. Yeah, that's on Hulu. You said it's on uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, mm. mm. yep. We also had one out called The Tomorrow War that I wanted to check out. Oh, yeah, I didn't end up watching that. Well, next, that's next for you, Pat. I have some well, homework. Yeah, there's some other stuff coming out though. I think isn't the the new like Lord of the Rings thing coming out? Uh, we have House of the Dragons coming yeah. out soon. Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. I know Lord of the Rings is there's something in the works, and then I saw it on like on the my home on my uh, Fire Stick. It was like up at I the think top. tonight. I think tonight, if it's out, I'm pretty sure it's out. I've been seeing trailers all over. I'm gonna watch The Gray Man on Netflix. It's with like I think Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. Okay. So Chris Evans plays like a villain in this one, so mm. kind of curious. Mm. It looks like a show movie. With twists always, and turns, right up my I always, alley. I always like question when, which I guess I understand when certain at certain times actors want to get out of a certain series or yeah. a trilogy order because it's or hard for me like, to yeah. like. It's hard for me to see them on the other side of like the character. So it's like they play like some like hero, obviously like Chris Evans, and now yeah. you're gonna be a villain. So I can't even take it seriously. Yeah, but he's like a he's like a villain that like talks the same. Like he's not like a dark villain, you know. Yeah, I think like it's, Captain wait, America wait. evil. <laughs> like, okay, you know he did play a villain in a in another movie I saw. Not a villain, but like a bad guy. Um, mm. Knives Knife Party or Knives Out. Or knives something out. Like that. Yeah, Knives yeah. Out. That was a really good movie. It was good, but like he, I don't know. He just like too goofy for me to be like a villain. No, nah, for sure. Yeah. And that was like the whole part of it, though. Um, so now that we're on the subject, Knives Out, movies like that, that are like murder mystery, you know? I fucking love that shit. Yeah, but it doesn't even have to be murder mystery. It just has to be uh, lots of twists or yeah, like, I mean. curveballs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, any yeah. movies with a twist, so anyone that has recommendations, this will be on YouTube. Please post in the comments because I feel like I've seen every fucking piece of cinema that's out. Yes, and for those who don't know, our YouTube channel is uh, Mix underscore Group. I think Fuck. I forget every time. I think it's just, no, no, no. It's just Mix Group. Mix Group. You'll find it. You'll find it either way. <laughs> <laughs> mix Group. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'll post it. This one's Justin sends his audio file. I'll, I'll post it. Um, I don't know if anyone out there wants to comment. Make sure to comment. But absolutely. Okay. So that's that's that. So we've been on. We've been kind of on a you tear. A, you, have, you have a little bit of echo. Can you hear me? Yeah. I hear it. I don't know. I can also hear from. myself. Uh, it might be Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it wasn't there at all, but now I kind of hear it. Yeah. It's okay. We'll, we'll fight through it. Yep. What the fuck? Why is it doing that? Anyways, so we've been kind of on a tear for baseball. Yeah. And uh, yesterday we went. Um, I kind of forget what we did. Doesn't matter. We went like hit a. Oh, you know what? We had the over in the Reds Mets game, and we've been kind of getting saved by the baseball extra innings. Mm-hmm. 
and it was we had over nine and a half. And I think the game was like two two going into extra innings. So at four runs. And they ended up the final score ended up being I'm sorry. The game was three three. And then the game ended eight three in, in extra innings. Mm-hmm. So that's how we hit our first bet and then uh we got fucking smoked on the Dodger game. Did they you? had like they had like really good numbers against the Rockies pitcher. And they came up as like the top top stack on the day. And uh they just fucking no showed. We had them we had them over team total of five runs or five and a half runs. And they scored their second run in extra innings to win the game. Yeah, so I, two the game I had I had a little bit of action on it. So yeah. I need to, this needs to be stated and said. I know Trey Turner is good. He's almost like you with show every time I bet on him, he, he screws me. Yeah. Every time zero percent betting on Trey Turner. Well, make sure you add that to your little notebook. I swear to God, and I did it. So I bet on him the night before as well. He didn't hit, and then I bet on him last night. And he was at nine and a half at a hitter fantasy score. I was like, okay, he hasn't done shit the last two games, like the last couple games. So hoping that he fills out today. That whole got walked like his first two or three at bats. So I was like, okay, <laughs> and then he struck out his last one or, or grounded out his last. One. I was like, God damn it! Dude. Yep, I can never get right the uh, Dodger bats. No, you, you have the most. I did. Consistent- I did have a, a bet the night before. They had a. It was literally a give me on price. It was like total home runs for like it was Mookie, Muncy, Will Smith, Gavin Lunks, and like another person. And I was like, what the? Okay, one of these people are hitting a home run tonight. Sure yeah. shit, Mookie and Muncy both hit one. Yeah, I was just about to say you're going to get the most consistency batter fantasy points or uh, total bases out of mm-hmm. uh, Mookie Betts, but he's been like out for a while. That's why you've been having to like either pick Trey Turner or Fer- Freddie Freeman. Yep. Yeah. I can never pick right with those two. The last two I said, Freeman and Turner. They, them. they basically just go opposite whenever I take them. <laughs> I swear so, to God. <laughs> so I, tend to, I tend to lean away from Dodgers if I can yeah. help it. Yeah. But Dodgers pitching on the other hand, like I'm like, I'm like 80%. Well, I mean, they have a really good pitching staff, so yeah. As long as they, as long as it's not like some incredible or outrageous number, you have good. I know I have Gonsolin. I know I have Gonsolin today over over strikeouts. I know they're playing the Cubs, so it might not hit. But uh, it's where it is. is that home? Yeah, I think it's at home, right? It's got to be because we played three yeah. games in a row at Dodger Stadium. There's no way yeah. we fly to Chicago to play the next day. Well, you'd be surprised, but yeah, it's at home. I have the uh, Houston Astros run line this morning. Right now, it's third inning, and they're losing one zero. Mm. But do you know what the Dodge? Do you have any like? Are you on Bovada or anything? What, what you, do you want to know? I want to know what the Dodger line is at, like like uh, game total, like team total, like for or both teams. The over? Yeah, because <laughs> Dodgers have played like the last seven days in a row. It's eight and a half over is even under oh. eight and a half is minus one twenty. Yeah, see, I was I would think under because I mean unless we're in a groove, which we kind of looked like we are, but I just think that we've played a lot of games in a row. Who's pitching for Chicago? It is Mark Leiter Jr. Okay, I'm maybe sure we, maybe we absolutely destroy the Cubs today then because yeah, I don't got still in pitching. The thing that we kind of swept the Rockies. <laughs> yeah, the thing that kind of fucked our team total yesterday was the fact that Will Smith wasn't uh, playing, and he's like a big bat in the lineup. And right. So I'm sure he's playing today, fresh off of you know day's rest. So yeah, because he played the day before for sure. Yeah, he just sat yesterday. So makes sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you could it could still be Dodgers dominate eight zero and the game still goes under. You know. Yeah. So, I think I hear Justin. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> hey. Um, okay, perfect timing. So we could. I kind. I probably have like fifteen minutes. I mean, um, I wanted to talk about. I wanted to keep the trend of discussing some form of football every day until we get to opening day. Um, 
our opening weekend, I guess. Partly, part of this is going to be for us to educate ourselves on all the freaking uh, transfers that happen, who plays where, that kind of shit. So the topic for today is going to be, I'm just going to go off uh, the website is, I think it's 247. It is 247sports.com. It's their top 25 returning quarterbacks. I'll start from the bottom, go to number one, and then uh, kind of just have an open discussion for any thoughts. Sound good? All right. Yep. Oh, okay. That way I don't have to like put you guys on the spot. Like pick, uh, you know, that kind of shit. So. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Number 25. I'll try. Uh, I'll just, I'll just say the names and then they have like little uh, tidbits on their stats and stuff like that. And their projected outlook next year or this year. If we want to go back and you know, I can read them, but number 25 is Peyton Thorne from Michigan state. 24 is DJ Uyungle from Clemson. 23, Phil Jerkovich from Boston College. 22, Keaton Slovis from Pitt. 21 is Alia Tagaviola from Maryland. 20 is Anthony Richardson from Florida. 19 is Jackson Dart, Ole Miss. 18, Quinn Ewers, Texas. 17, Malik Cunningham, Louisville. 18, or I'm sorry, 16 is Aiden O'Connell, Purdue. 15 is Will Levis, Kentucky. 14 is Will Rogers, Mississippi State. 13, Cam Rising, Utah. 12, Brennan Armstrong from Virginia. 11, Sam Hartman, Wake Forest. 10, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami. 9, Devin Leary, NC State. Eight is Spencer Rattler, South Carolina. Seven, Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina. Six, Hendon Hooker from Tennessee. Five is KJ Jefferson, Arkansas. Four is Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma. Three is Caleb Williams, USC. Number two is CJ Stroud, Ohio State. And number one is Bryce Young, Alabama. Wow. Somebody's typing away. I can hear that. Uh, me, I'm doing a little something else, but... Uh... Okay. I probably only remember like two people you said. But, uh, Full article. <laughs> I know that a lot of people are high on the guy from Texas. Supposedly. Quinn like, Ewers? Yeah. Well, he was, if anybody, if people don't know, he two years ago reclassified as uh, from a junior, I'm sorry, from a whatever, however the reclassifying works. He left high school a year <laughs> early to enroll at Ohio State. And took like a, a million dollar NIL deal. So it was like the fourth string quarterback at Ohio State, and then after the year transferred to Texas. So now he's apparently on this top twenty five quarterbacks. He's number eighteen. However, Texas just signed fucking uh, Arch Manning, so he potentially could be, in my opinion, he potentially could be the next uh, Tate Martell. Correct. So you were saying about him, what were you going to say? Well, I don't really know anything about him. Like, his hype is all because he was good in high school or what? Like, Yep, that's it. Okay, well. As far as I know. Those are the people I like to bet against. Here's what, here's what they're – Because – Oh, big time. Anytime yeah. he's playing, if he's starting or anything like that, Vegas is going to give him, like, three points, as, you know? Yep. Like, this guy is that quarterback, so therefore this team is going to be, you know, minus three. And if they're at home, then they're going to be, you know, favored by six points probably because they get the home field again. But mm-hmm. those are the teams I like to just, like, bet against. Like, okay, that means yep. nothing to me. So, until proven otherwise, I'll, if he's the starter, I'll look to target against Texas. That's for sure. For sure. Certain – like it. If, if For those who don't know, like, betting lines, certain players carry certain weight on the betting lines. So, like Justin was saying, if Quinn Ewers – all of a sudden, like was hurt and the backup went in. You could you would see the line move accordingly, and that's that'll show you how much each player is worth. Typically, a quarterback is worth the most. But like in the NFL, like Aaron Rodgers, let's say Packers are minus, you know, they're minus three, and then he come to find out he's hurt, he's not playing, and the back was playing, and then that maybe that line moves from minus three to like even. So he, therefore, Aaron Rodgers is worth like. 
three points. So Quinn Ears, who knows how much he's worth, but you can probably take advantage of it in the beginning for sure, right? Mm-hmm. I'll, re- I'll read you his, 20, 20, 20, his 2022 outlook. It says, Quint Ewers, who was ranked as the number one overall recruit in the 2021 class, according to 247 Sports, did not throw a pass last season at Ohio State. So why is he getting this much love before his first campaign at Texas? Ewers has a chance to make an instantaneous splash if he wins the job. All right, here we go. If he wins the job mm-hmm. over Hudson Carr early in fall camp. Uh, and that's it. it and that's the expectation based on Intel and what we saw in the Longhorn spring game. In seven games last season, two starts, Card completed 61% of his passes uh, with five touchdowns, one interception. But Ewers offers a different dynamic as a quarterback with every tool in the arsenal. So really, it sounds like a very uh, like biased. Absolutely biased. He's got some tools in it on his tool belt and shit. Like, yeah. Okay. He's saving the best for you know for in what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels like nothing. Yeah, so I think the the podcast has a bearish outlook on Quinn Ears this year. Absolutely, I agree. Here's the, here's the next one that stuck out to me though. Um, Slovis. <laughs> <laughs> to me, yep. like okay. um, I'll keep this like as vague as possible, but. Um, I don't. We don't know him personally, but we we've, <laughs> we've seen him out and about. You know, quote unquote. Uh, yeah. He's just a dork, and he's <laughs> not like someone who's gonna like physically carry. Take, yeah, a team take over a game to victory. Yeah, no, so it's, it's not gonna happen. Keaton Slovis. He transferred from USC. Uh huh. So, which is which is so bizarre because yeah, he was <laughs> he was at USC. To me, his comparison is Josh Rosen. Yep. He just like so like he has, doesn't have like that that fire that internal fire you know yep. he just like he's he's like a serviceable quarterback but it, it, everything needs to go perfect for him to like stand out and if like adversity hits and like I don't, I don't know like he just he's very he's mediocre. not the one people like look to <laughs> for leadership I would they'll, they'll look so. for him they'll, he'll be a leader but he's just not gonna. Like care, he's not like a Baker Mayfield. You're not going to see that type of. Yeah, he doesn't care. Maybe, if he maybe he's not going to be asked to do that, but yeah. he's just not someone who's going to. So because sometimes you need that, you need like the the X factor, or the it factor from your quarterback yeah. to get you certain victories. You know, especially against like tough uh, like rival opponent opponents or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, and that was like his his downfall at SC. He just never was able to like hit. He'd win the games that he was supposed to win, but never. Um, the ones where it was just like a uh, you know a battle of the whole game. Not so. to mention he's going to now see a uh, an uptick in competition level going from Pac-12 to ACC, especially the hostile environments. Way yeah. way more hostile environments playing ACC like at Virginia Tech, Miami, Clemson than playing in Pac-12 against like fucking Colorado and shit like that. Like <clears throat> we'll see how it goes, but it's interesting that he was the starter at USC. And Jackson Dart was the backup who, like, at times beat him out during mm-hmm. that year. And then they both fucking transferred from USC and then insert Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Keenan Sullivan's not Pitt and Jackson Dart's at Ole Miss, which I do kind of like the Jackson Dart at Ole Miss because I think Lane Kiffin's a very quarterback-friendly system. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm surprised – for my own bias, that Tyler Buckner is not on there. Because mm. you could say the same thing about him and his tool belt as you did Quinn Ewers and at least put him at 25. He had he has way more like game film and experience um, than Quinn Ewers does. So that's interesting. Maybe yeah, a little the only thing is there. like um, Notre Dame never gets any – No. Preseason love in any sort of like picks, whether it's team as a whole or individual players, never, ever, 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 ever. never. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see the dynamic change though if they join the Big Ten, because okay. now now you need to like support those kinds of teams. You can't just like like clown on them, you know. Um, I have two talking points here, which, well, three. Number one is the top tier quarterbacks. Not surprising. Um, 
My like dark horse, maybe not the team, but the quarterback. Well, here, here, let me let me say it differently. There's a team that I am going to take over team total a lot this year, and I did it a couple times last year, and that's the over team totals in Louisville games because their quarterback mm-hmm. is unstoppable because he can extend plays. Malik Cunningham, they have him at 17 right now. Unstoppable, like he's like way faster. He seems okay, maybe not way faster, but he seems like he's a faster version of Lamar Jackson. Holy shit! <laughs> and just anytime there's like pass rush, he can just get out of it. There's nobody that can even like come close to spying him. Yeah, just, I just don't think he had too many like weapons last year, and uh, maybe just like another year under his belt. So he's entering. This is what it says: entering his fourth season as a starting quarterback, four-year starter. I mean, that's like a lot of experience. Um, mm-hmm. He accounted for 39 touchdowns, 19 passing, and 20 rushing. <laughs> that's Jeez, that's, right. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, let me see. Here. Da, 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 da. I got a couple more if you need to. He had a yeah. pass the baton here. Okay. He, <laughs> he, he eclipsed a thousand yards on the ground last year. Easy. So just something to keep an eye on. And the uh, the other person that I like, I don't think. Needs to be that high, maybe like number twenty five. But of course, fucking these these platforms love to give hype to uh, Coastal Carolina mm-hmm. and uh, Grayson McCall. He's currently at number seven. Come on, come on. Yeah, maybe come number on. Five or some shit. But yeah. I agree. But, okay, I I just pulled up the list you were looking at, so now I'm able to see what you're talking about. Okay, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Tongo Vailoa. <laughs> Talia, he, he is Maryland. He is a not. He's not good, and obviously he gets name recognition, so he gets a little bit more credit. Absolutely, and he's deserving. He's not good at all, and neither is Maryland. So um, that's well, exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Mar- the, the next one, though, that I saw, um, uh, where is he? Cam Rising, legit Utah, really good. Yep, really good. He's older mm-hmm. too, I think. Yeah. So, so he's got like that. You know, you don't. You don't need to like. Is he a leader? Question mark. Like the, no. he's like fucking in his mid twenties. This this <laughs> website twenty four seven sports has him at thirteen. He deserves to be in the top ten at least. Good. Switch him sure. with uh, McCall from Coastal Carolina. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For uh, another. Here's a quarterback that I think is way too high at number twelve. Brandon Armstrong, Virginia. He's not very good either. No. Yeah. And it just uh, I mean, he had like a couple of receivers that he just targeted the whole game, and then they're all they're gone. All yeah, no, nah, he's look for Virginia to have a Bad not year. so good years here. Yeah, and then I didn't know Sam Hartman was back for another year. Yeah, but he just that, that was like the one thing about my uh, my Wake Forest thing. It's just like he's he's he to me is like well he I don't know if you guys watched it, but he was on that show on Netflix QBU. Uh, anybody watch it? No. Negative. It's like a. I don't. I can't. It's hard to explain. It. It's not like a hard knocks, but it's like they just follow a couple of like the top quarterbacks. Yeah. He, he played on like such a dog shit high school team in South Carolina, but they like of course like won like state championship and it's like, geez, like everybody, every other team is a state championship in like every state other than California, but. uh Real and quick, then, I can't I can't watch shows like that because nothing to me will be two days. <laughs> two days. It's basically like that. It's basically what it is. Yeah. But anyways, and then he goes to the Wake Forest, and uh, it's just the system. He's he's like he was good in that system, but we'll see if he can do it again. It's hard to like repeat it. He's not like I don't think he's an he's an NFL quarterback. So, okay, I have two more that are. Um... <laughs> not ranked in this in the correct position. Okay. okay, number four, Dylan Gabriel. There's no way he should be number four <laughs> right now. First okay. of all, he's coming off like a two year long injury, and he's transferred school. So, what? Why is he deserving of number four? Mm. Yeah, I would have to double check, but I think he's familiar with the offensive coordinator. That's fine, but he's not familiar with his players that he's passing the ball to. Yeah. I just don't – there's there's other quarterbacks in there that are probably more deserving it. I'd put Rising at four, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that definitely supports my theory of uh, 
Utah being a top four team, maybe. For sure. Okay. And then Good the next one, uh, this is a, just a built in bias for me. Um, Spencer Rattler at number eight. <laughs> well, he was on that. South Carolina is not a team that's going to like run and gun. They, well, they might. They, they were decent last year because uh, they have uh, Kent, Mike Leach as their, quarter, as their uh, quarterback, as their head coach and their, their play caller. So Leach? No, no. He's at yeah. Mississippi State. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. No. You're right. Beamer's at South Carolina. My bad. You're right. Beamer? Beamer, younger Beamer, like the son. Beamer, Ben's and Bentley? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Shane Beamer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter. He's, yeah, you're right. Uh, he's not a great quarterback either. Well, if it if carries any weight, he was on that show QBU as well. Or it's QB1 or some shit like that. He was on. So it was him and Hartman or whatever his name is. Both like goofy, like, I don't know. I wouldn't want that as my starting quarterback, so let's put it that way. Yeah. So there's, uh, I don't know who made this list, but it seems <laughs> as if they went like, all right, you know, one, two, three, and then just like pick the name out of a hat. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Here's 30 names. You can leave five out. Yeah. This guy, Brad Crawford, did this list. <laughs> The uh the thing about Brad Crawford's on the old radar now. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna mention when he talked about Talia, my, Maryland runs a total gimmick offense as well, and it's one of those things where they just throw like pops and bubbles and like slip screens and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he goes like uh, you know twelve completions for like three hundred fifty yards because they just like take it to the house and it's like. It, it, they don't really rely on him to do much at the quarterback position, right? But yeah, I, I agree. He's he's overrated. Um, I would say PJ, you have anyone you want to talk to? You want to take over here? Go ahead. Go ahead. College. <laughs> I still need to catch up on college. If we're talking NFL, I will interject. Well, that's like kind of why we're going over this, so you can be a little bit more familiar with the player. You know what? I, I didn't see a quarterback from Georgia on there. Well, because they still don't know who the fuck's going to be their quarterback. It doesn't matter. I would just, I mean, the fact yeah. that they don't have one up there is. You can I just assume be... it's going to be JT Daniels if he's still there. Who knows? They have Coastal Carolina. Carolina. Huh? I said they don't have Georgia with Coastal Carolina quarterbacks up there. Yeah, but like. Uh, Brandon I'm... Crawford, whoever the fuck this is, you need to do your homework, pal. I, uh, I just don't know if, like, I don't know what my expectation of Georgia are this year. They lost a lot of players. I, it's just expected that they, they reload or what? They kind of got saved oh, by wh- whoever the little like little Grom that came in to, to play quarterback. Mm-hmm. What, was, what was his name again? I forget. Fuck. I'll tell you. I'll, I, it's going to bother me. I need to look it up. Um, but like... Is he still there? I think so. I don't right? know. How about how about uh, um, Bo Nix is at Oregon, but the, I know a lot yep. of people had really high hopes on uh, Ty Thompson last year as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Bo Nix is from from what I've heard. Uh, his name's Stetson Bennett, and he is still there. And uh, J T. Daniels is not there. Graduated. I guess, or he left, but according to the Georgia's current roster, yeah. So I'd imagine Stetson Bennett's going to be their quarterback again. But come on, you got to be able to freaking game plan for like his strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Um, but not, anyways, but, yeah, go ahead. Anyways, if you were saying about the Oregon quarterbacks, I'm just surprised that they're usually like a preseason top ten team. And well, Bonix, Bonix is a little limited on what he can and can't do. Um, so yeah, maybe they make that that transition. Okay. Halfway also, through. JT Daniels transferred to West Virginia. Mm. Mm. I think. Jeez, it's just who's going to hold the record for like the most teams played in a college career? <laughs> God, it's like everyone they just transfer every year. <laughs> but anyways, I I uh, I like. Let me go back. I also like – where did he go? No, nope, not that far down. Well, hold on. Really quick. Sorry. 
if JT Daniels is gone, that means Stetson Bennett's going to be this. He's the returner from the national championship game. Yes. Is he not included in the top 25 quarterbacks in college football? Mm, nope. Not at all. I mean, nope. he's not? I mean, he should be. Okay. But yeah. he's just like – He's just like a system quarterback, though. So he doesn't like. <laughs> I agree, but he deserves more credit than definitely of people on that I, list. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I I I hear you, man. I hear you, but yeah, maybe. Put, you gotta take these. You gotta take these preseason polls and shit with a grain of salt. Of of course, but. I don't. This I guy's trying to like make be like a shot caller right now. I guarantee half of his list don't even end up on the top twenty-five. Wow. Well. I just didn't think Stetson Bennett was that good. It just people, the teams they played completely checked out because of how dominant Georgia's defense was, mm-hmm. you know. And so he's another very, slowness, like yeah, it was just very uh, like low scoring, and a, or maybe not low scoring, but um, as soon as Georgia goes up like two scores, you know, ten zero or thir- you know thirteen zero or something like that. Yeah. That's it. Game's over. You don't even, the other team doesn't even have to play anymore. And that's kind of <laughs> how, like, the Stetson Bennett thing, like, oh, you know, wins all these games. Whatever. Yeah. I don't think he's that good. I, I, guess he's gonna be I like it. I like the take. Yeah. Let me throw, let me, go ahead. Let me throw a name out there, and and I want to know what your uh, instant reaction is. Mm. Logan Bonner. Logan Bonner. My initial reaction, who the fuck is that guy? Logan Bonner. Hmm. What team does he play for? <laughs> Utah State. Oh, uh, he was there last year? Correct. Mm. He's legit. He had 3,500 3, passing yards yesterday. Or yesterday, yesterday. Last year. Yeah. 36 passing touchdowns. Jesus. I like it. And you say dark horse. <laughs> I can dark horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I also like uh, Will Rogers. It was kind of what I was going to say about the Rattler. It's a different team, but he plays for the, in the Mike Leach system. Did pretty good last year. Second year under under uh, Leach's system, so probably see a good uh, output. Good output from him. Will Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mississippi State. Yeah, uh, I just think. We should recreate our own list mm. and post it. Okay. Um, because there's should. way like there's too many other quarterbacks that are not on this list. And we should uh, we should put like, it out as the corrected yeah. top twenty five list. For sure. Talk of law is like like that name shouldn't even like be near the top twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. I, like if you, yeah. plus if you if you weren't like a if you weren't a starter last exactly. year, or you were a starter and you got like replaced by someone else, you shouldn't be like a top ten returning quarterback. Like, For sure, a lot there's of a these... reason. There's a reason why you were replaced. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of the reason these people are on the list is just because people recognize their name. It's not necessarily the, the, there's not like they had, they didn't prove anything to be there. Yeah, on this list, yeah. you know, just like oh, dude, throw Keaton Slows' name in there. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. What was I'm trying to just look up? Oh, maybe, maybe not. I bet you someone. I bet you there's going to be a decent quarterback from Florida State this year. To second, I think it's the second year under whatever their coach's name is. But they, they're <laughs> the guy that came from Memphis. Um, the white guy. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember his name. He was but, like offensive coordinator or something, right? No, Norvell? he was their head coach. Oh, yeah. Norvell. Yeah, Norvell, yeah. yeah. It's like at some point they're going to – I mean, fuck, they almost beat Notre Dame last year. Mm-hmm. Game that, one. Yeah, that was like uh, that one guy's first game back or whatever. Yeah, no, I know. It was such a, like, a weird atmosphere. But uh, Jordan Travis is their returning quarterback. Right. So what I'm saying is like in that system, shit, he might be – he might be pretty good this year. They might be pretty good. Well, they open up game one against Duquesne, so it can't be like that big of a competition. Yeah. Okay. But also, you know, you know, who else has a, a good quarterback, and there's there may be some value in taking the team total over on this team, but uh, Tanner McKee from Stanford. 
Stanford's going to be a little bit better this year than they were last year. And uh, this guy was like a five-star prospect, I believe, but took his mission before he enrolled in school. And so he's a junior this year. And uh, what's his name? Tanner McKee, M-C-K-E-E. Elder Tanner McKee. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Let me see here. Holy shit. (laughs) Let me see if I can get you his age. Uh, Oh, he's 22. Not that much, but like that's pretty old for college to be a junior. He's a six six. Like I said, I think he was a five star. So I would expect him to be a little bit better this year. I would probably add him to the to the list. Yay, nay. Yeah, absolutely. Let me know when you're done talking college football. I, I I have oh. nothing. I have nothing for college football. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm just kind of like <laughs> I saw something. Caught my eye when I was looking at like um, game one spread. <laughs> Do you know who the head coach of the Yukon Huskies? Negative. Oh, Yukon Huskies. Is is it? Uh, isn't it uh, the Lance Taylor? Nope. Oh, he's the offensive coordinator. Maybe, maybe it's not Yukon. I don't. I don't know. No, not not Lance Taylor. He's not even on the coaching staff. Oh, he went somewhere else then. Hey, I give up, man. <laughs> Jim Mora. Oh, my gosh. How often does the NFL coach coming to college work? It, well, not often. He already tried to do it at UCLA and didn't go well. <laughs> Correct. Which is why I wanted to take Utah State game one. Minus 27 and a half <laughs> at UConn. I like, I like that. I'm I sorry. Like that. It might even be at, it's at Utah State. Oh, yeah. That's a lock. UConn fucking sucks, too. They, the worst team in college football last year. Yeah, I can't imagine. It looks like midseason and shit. I just yeah. don't think like Jim Moore is going to like, he didn't recruit any players. This is all that's last year's recruits. So, hey, son, come play at UConn, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> rather go to Juco, and they're just yeah. yeah, they're gonna one of the like, like in my opinion, one of the better quarterbacks, in definitely in the group of five or like in the uh, yeah group of five. Yep. Okay. okay. I like that. Good luck, like UConn. Hey, let me add one more. Utah, hold on, really quick. Utah State is number twenty-four preseason right now too. Yep. Go ahead. Awesome. Yeah, I, saw, I, I saw love that. locks. I love locks already. Adding another quarterback to our list, our running list. Uh, I don't I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it's Toon or Tooney from Houston. Oh yeah, Houston was pretty good last year. He's returning yep. starter, and uh, yesterday or two days ago, we went over at top twenty-five. They were like a top fifteen team. So I like it. Yep. I'm just so we're writing out all the names because we're gonna have to compile. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's in my yeah, fucking brain. Yeah, we put together list after this. Yeah, I'll just quickly. Browsing here. I'm surprised they didn't put a Michigan quarterback in there. I know they have a quarterback battle, but that's that's surprising. It's the same thing as the Stetson Bennett, a returning playoff team and no quarterback on the top 25. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Bizarre. Um, Are you guys ooh, about wrapped ooh. up with college here? Hold on. Might yeah. have another one. Well, we're at, we're at 54 right now, so I just wanted to keep Hold it at an hour or so. Max Duggan from TCU, or Dugan, where he was their starter last year. I think he got hurt at some point, but uh, TCU might surprise some folks in the uh, Big 12 this year. Huh. No, TCU is always like well, the uh, a dark horse. They they were I mean they have like a decent history. I know they got rid of their, their coach, but um, they with the two powerhouses leaving the Big Twelve currently without any other teams coming in, TCU has the best opportunity, one of the best opportunities to be the top dog in that conference because of the location of TCU. I think it's in Dallas, and so it's like an easy like recruiting. It's easier to recruit to Dallas than it is to um, where Baylor is. 
and uh, where uh, Texas Tech is. They're like yeah. in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and it's like you come to fucking Dallas, D town. So, <laughs> TCU is west of Dallas, just south of Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. So it's in that metro area. Yep. Yep. So keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for TCU. Okay, BJ, take yes, the sir. baton. Well, I just wanted to end it, or I guess. Okay. Yeah. That's good. No, no, no. Yeah. I just no. no, no, not like that. I, I was saying, um, I wanted the last point to be like maybe, uh, just equal to NFL, which the first game of the year, week one on September eighth, is Bills versus Rams. Let's go. Uh, boo. No, I think that's a great game to kick off the season with. I mean, I'm not really – not even because it's L.A., but just I think Bills and Rams, that's a great uh, season opener right there. I just I just don't get hyped over NFL. I do. I mean, because I play fantasy still. Do you guys do fantasy? Oh, so do I. Yeah. Huh. You guys just never win. This is why you never – <laughs> we went. It, we won like uh, the consolation like, two years ago or whatever. Nice. Right, Justin. It was like yeah. We won. We took first like five, five years ago or something like that. But still, <laughs> just, give me bills, money line. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. I think Rams stand no chance. Well, Rams. Rams signed a receiver. Fuck, I remember bringing this up. They, they got. Uh, 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 I want to say Allen Robinson. They yeah, Allen Robinson. Robinson. Yep. Yeah. Mm, not bad. Hey, if you guys I, want I a just, review of all the NFL trades that happened in the offseason, head over to the underdog favorite, you know? <laughs> I just I just question how Tank motivated Joseph. they're going to be. I, know, I question how motivated they're going to be after Super Bowl. No, because yeah. they, went, no. they went basically all in. I don't want to get too too deep into this, but the Rams basically went all in the last two years. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, and just it, like they're going to cruise this year, I think. There's no reason to, you know, try to yeah. They also, were, don't, don't so. forget that Bills uh, also got Von Miller from the Rams. I would actually, yeah. I would actually look at the under total wins and, the Rams this year. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Also, mm. Bills have, if I'm not mistaken, Jamison Crowder too. I think the Bills win it hands down this year, like untouched. Yeah. The only issue is they don't really have like a running back though. They have yeah. Josh Allen. They don't need a running back. Yes, they do because that was going at some point going to get killed. Seriously, maybe he's just too he's just too big to get killed. I don't know. Yeah, a lot you know what? A lot of correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm remembering it wrong, a lot of their go to plays in the playoffs was like Josh Allen quarterback keep. And it's yeah, like, not, it's not like a <laughs> successful game plan though. And down like when you need a play, you have to just let your running back run the ball. I mean your quarterback. I don't know. You need you need like one more playmaker, like just Someone a little bit more reliable at the running back position. Well, I think. Yeah, I get it. But I think what they're doing now, they added, so they have Diggs, they added Crowder. Um, I'm, I'm actually not too sure they're like number three is, but uh, I know they have, they have two tight ends too. I'm pretty sure they got OJ Howard along with Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox is legit. Yeah. Oh, they have the other receiver that was like scoring all their touchdowns. They have Diggs, they have Gabriel Davis, they have Gabriel, Davis. Gabriel Davis. That's a fucking squad right there. Yeah, but they're yeah. all small. They don't have like. But look at their tight ends, is what I'm saying. They have Knox. Knox is basically a fourth receiver, and then if they have OJ Howard too, just for blocking, like you know, I mean, you I, want to I think? think... Hey, sorry, go ahead. I I think that they're actually going to be in a really tough division though this year. They're not going to. Oh, they're not going to run the table like with like a weaker Pats and a weaker Jets. I think you'll see Jets and Pats both. Give uh, Buffalo a run for their money. In the, in the I think division. so too because I was following the Pats offseason moves and they flew under the radar. Pats have a squad right now too, and look yeah, for Matt I, Jones to just ball out this year. Yeah, so that means I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm. I mean, just as a pre, marking my words on July seventh, two thousand twenty-two. I think the Bills win it this year. Hmm. And that was just my last take. You guys don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Sure. I, I mean, <laughs> just like you are with college, I have to do some reviewing on NFL. Yeah. yeah. I can't really make like any give any hot. I takes, definitely but... followed the uh, NFL offseason like very well. So I can give I'm, you. I'm I can give you 
two. Okay, so I already gave you the team total under Rams, but I'll give you one super early future prop, and that's going to be the Niners to win the I like that. NFC West. Really? <laughs> and I would take the team total over. I don't know what they are. I'm just saying that's the Niners are going to win that that uh, division. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be the Seahawks. I can tell you that. No, nope. Seahawks because, will be dead last. Uh, Shanahan. Oh, okay. Shanahan is going to be what? Um, whatever that fool's name is from the Rams. McVay. Yes. Yep. He's gonna he's gonna out coach teams this year. Mm-hmm. Earn a paycheck. That's what he's gonna do. Guaranteed. Yeah. Lock it. I think the Cardinals are on the downfall. Uh, I think Kyler Murray has some some things to figure out. They need a they need a new quarterback for sure. Well, but, I've already said I said this in the offseason. Expect Kyler Murray to be in the MLB in the next two or three years. Yeah. Anybody think, fucking think wants he's it, checking huh? out? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He's a cry baby. I just I cannot I can't be behind Kyler Murray. Just his he's, antics. He's just like a soft body. <laughs> you just you get there's there's two type of people you get from that generation of quarterbacks. Yeah, you get like the Kyler Murray, Spencer Rattler, like prima donna, mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield, or, or no, or you get the Baker Mayfield. He's, I think he's on the other side. Just like I think so too. Like blue collar, fucking like doubt me, I'll show you. Like he's Speaking not the greatest. Of Baker Mayfield, welcome to Carolina. You know, yeah, he's not the greatest, but I'd rather play with someone who's like who like really wants to win than somebody who cares more about their 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 like. Their brand, you know, Josh Allen. Josh Allen, perfect mm-hmm. example. Yeah, yep. I have a question: Who's going to be the Browns' quarterback this year? <laughs> yeah, they jumped the gun there. Jacoby Brissett, sear up, man. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, he's he's probably the best like third string quarterback you're going to get. Yeah, I've, I've I've been saying I said that as well on one of my episodes that Jacoby, well Baker will be if he doesn't go to be a starter, he'll be the best backup quarterback in the league, and then behind him, I think is Jacoby Brissett. Well, he has some starting, uh, some starting experience down with the Colts. So I mean, I liked him on Indianapolis. I don't, I, I didn't no. see him doing anything bad there. Reality is that anyone can step in for the Cleveland Browns and play quarterback because they're just handing it off to the best one two combo at running back. Yeah, seriously, just too. fucking give me a jersey. <laughs> yeah, fucking jersey and a knee brace. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Jersey and a knee brace. Yeah. Well, you guys have anything else to cover or what? No, but like, let's keep, well, not for today, but let's keep the trend of uh, football talk because. I think Very we're transitioning into football only. We can we'll, we'll review picks and plays <laughs> in the beginning, and then it's going to be all football. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, same time tomorrow or whatever. Justin, send me the, the file either today or tonight. I can either post it tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all right. right. Stay hydrated. Yes, sir. <laughs>